What's up, YouTube? It's Tanner with Young Living. Uh, so, anyways, I had already kind of recorded it, but uh, today we're gonna be focusing on a jet sled. Uh, specifically, I'm just gonna put my GoPro up on my hat. Uh, specifically, this is the bigger jet sled. So, this is the biggest one you can get from, I think, Chappelle. Anyways, uh, so as you can see, I kind of have this going on right here. Um, so I tried to use some like conduit piping um, stuff and you can kind of see like up in here how I have you know bolts and I was trying to do stuff but it wasn't working it couldn't hold the weight so I went with this new complete plan and I already made the back wheels because I don't want to record me making the entire thing because um, it's just gonna be a lot but so basically what I took is I took a 2 by 4 this is 34 inches 34 inch 2 by 4 I took some half inch little copper fittings right here. Boom, boom, boom. Just to kind of hold this if it does in fact any way or form pop out. So this is half inch rod. So basically this half inch rod is right here. And then I just drilled in with a drill bit right here and a drill bit right here. Put a screw and a screw. And then I got these um, tires right here from Lowe's and I just threw a washer. The other one on the back's a lot tighter. Um, this one I'm gonna actually have to tighten up a little bit. And then basically right here, I uh, put a pin, uh, drilled a hole and put a pin. And so basically that holds it. And so um, I haven't done this side yet. I still, I gotta go grab some more material, but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys this way on this side, um, how I did it. Um, and then basically once this beam right here is created then I put some eye hooks in the top and just put a ratchet strap over the top so yes you do lose a little bit of room approximately six inches on this side which I think I'm just gonna put like my blind bags and my shell belt and all my little things right there and then you're gonna lose you know maybe uh, not much because this is actually the beveled side for the actual sled so you're not gonna miss a ton of room there um, on either and uh, eventually I'm gonna throw some LED lights on the front we're gonna have a video on that um, and this thing's primarily for California refuge hunting, um, where you're on a lotto system and you basically got to haul all your stuff out there as quick as possible and kind of try to beat people to certain holes. So anyways, this is just basically to convenience. Once you start pulling something like this through the mud, um, you know, wet grass, anything like that, it just binds up on this thing and it just, it's not fun to drag. Um, it gets really tiresome and it sucks so anyways came up with this uh this is we drug it out one day um and i was in the middle of the last build that was a fail and uh so we drug it out there it failed um so we ended up having to drag it out there but we had three guys and stuff so we had about uh three dozen duck decoys and i think a total of like eight goose decoys in there and that was uh, including guns um uh the blind three blind bags so it was quite a bit of gear for what it was. Obviously you can get covers for these and make them even bigger. And then eventually the plan is, is to just throw like a little uh, square tubing right there and run it out here and then make it basically a push cart. So anyways, I'm gonna get some material and I'm gonna show you guys how this is built. And uh, it's gonna be a really simple, easy way. And this is the best way to get these big, huge jet sleds out there. Cause as soon as you get to the pond, you just undo the ratchet strap. There's no holes in the sled. I can slide it off both. These will be camoed out so I can just set them on the side of the bank and I'll basically be good to go. So stay tuned and I'll show you guys how to do it. Alrighty guys, so I got my material. This is everything that you're gonna need for this project. I will say this inch, this is a half inch rod. So you're gonna need um, a 48 and then a 36 inch um, to do the entire front and back. So you're just short about, I think they're like 16 inches that I'm doing each one. So needless to say, you're going to need that. You're going to need some clamps, right? So you'll need 12 clamps. I used copper. You use galvanized. Uh, they're a little bit big over this, um, but they're really just to kind of keep it in place. Uh, you're going to need screws. And yes, I have a small box because I don't really use inch and a half screws a whole bunch. You're going to need some screw and eye hooks. Doesn't matter what size. This depends on what you want. And you're going to need your little hitch pin, um, 
clip thing right there. So that's what you need to do that along with one wheel and a two by four. So that's gonna be the entire project. So anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and cut down this bar to be the same size as that one. And we're gonna go forth with that. Additionally, I have these eyelets and I'm gonna install these into the sled on the side railing and my tie downs are gonna go through there. So that way these little cart things don't move back and forth if you hit a bump or knock it on a piece of brush or anything. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this and then we'll go into how you basically install it onto the piece of wood. All right, cool guys. So I got my, uh, my uh, half inch solid uh, dowel in place. So now um, I just use the saws off of this. And also I forgot to mention you're gonna need washers. Um, the washers are gonna go out on the end so your tire isn't up against. So basically what you're gonna do is you're just gonna take these little clips right here and you're just gonna screw them in hopefully uh, pretty pretty centered in there. So um, I'm gonna make this quick, hopefully. So one screw, and then you're just gonna put this in. So basically, the way I've been doing it is just like this. So in the end, you're gonna look like this. You're gonna have one on the end, one in the center and one on there. This isn't the focal point of the project. Maybe if you have a larger um, diameter um, bearing that you're gonna be sticking in your wheel, then maybe you could use a bigger, uh, you know, thicker, and these would actually support it somewhat. This is more so when it has weight on it. If it does have any sort of flex, this is gonna kinda cradle it. So anyways, and it also makes it easier. So the plan is, is we're gonna put a screw right here and then we'll have another bracket right here, and we'll put another screw right there. So I'm gonna get the rest of these brackets in, and then I'll show you the next process. All right, cool guys, so we got all of the brackets in. So the next part, you're basically gonna take whatever tire you choose. These are just the ones I got, so you can put these in, and you're basically gonna slide the tire on, right? So when you slide the tire on, you wanna make sure that there's gonna be enough room here on this back side. Right, so when you have enough room on the back side, you're basically gonna come back over here and where it sits flush, you're just gonna mark the rod because you want to just make sure that that rod's right there. You can measure it, you can be fancy. That's the quick, down to earth, dirty way to do it. So anyways, mark that and then you can remove your wire or your tire because you want it to be flat again. And you're just gonna make sure that that's right up there on the edge. So um, the next process, is you're gonna drill a hole right here and a hole right here. So I'm gonna actually move this bracket really quick and then we'll go over through um, drilling the holes. And I just misgaged this and I should have had it further down. So I'm gonna fix that and then we'll drill it out. All right guys, so we're back. Um, so I just moved that over. As you can see, uh, there was an old hole and there it is. I just like a little bit more room to work with um, because you are trying to drill this in. So anyways, I just took um, a drill bit, uh, it, d it depends on what screws you get, what size you need. So I'm not going to tell you you need to have this size or whatever because it's going to vary for everybody that's making this project. So anyways, uh, just take your drill and you're going to drill right in there and you're going to drill right in there. So I'm going to make the drills really quick and then uh, I'll show you the next step since uh, drilling is pretty boring. So anyways, hold tight and you guys will see the next step. All right, guys, so I made my first hole. Um, I forgot to kind of mention this part, part, but it's really easy if when you make that first hole, you basically tack one screw in and it's to make drilling the second hole a lot easier. So I'm gonna drill this one and then I'll show you the next step. Alrighty guys, so now we're gonna draw our last screw. Word of the wise, though when you guys do drill these, don't drill through the wood, especially depending on your screw size and your drill bit because that hole could be bigger than what your screw is, which it should be so your screw can go through it. So anyways, you just wanna get that seated in there. Not, uh, not super tight, but tight enough to really holds some weight. So um, I like to knock it off, take my metal shavings off. So I have a free area to work. And then, so this part, so I lost, uh, lost track of my wheel over here. So now you're going to go ahead and put the washer on there. All right, so, and sorry for the space guys, I'm in a, my wife's home, so it's a little bit of a tight space. So and you're gonna seat this wheel on after you seat the wheel on, you're going to look back over here 
and you're going to try to get not right up against the tire and uh, actually it helps if you take a secondary washer and slap the secondary washer on okay because that washer is going to going to tell you where to put it so you just kind of want to mark it not super far away but like pretty dang close i don't know if you can see that mark i'll have to look at the video but you're basically going to drill one last hole in there and that's where you're going to put your pen and then once that's done um this project at least for the wheels part is pretty much done and then we'll just install these and it'll be a done deal and uh, strap it to the front of the sled. All right guys, so we got through our hole right there. So I don't know if, how well you guys can see that or not, but there's a hole there. So needless to say, we're gonna go ahead and slap this wheel on. If I can get it on. And when you're first dealing with these, they kind of take a little bit of force in them because they're, you know, rough on the edges and stuff when you first cut them. So we're going to do that. And then we're going to put our washer. And then super ill prepared. And I did not have my pen ready. So anyways, you take your pen. I don't know how well you guys can see that, but there's the hole right there. And you like that. So has, I don't know if you guys can hear that, very minimal, minimal play, but it'll still run. So my plan is, is I'm gonna spray paint these all down um, at some point, not in this video, because uh, it is March now and duck season's quite a ways away. So it's not priority, but uh, I'm gonna paint all these down. So that way um, this isn't rusting or uh, anything like that. And then uh, I'm basically gonna just put like a lithium grease um, where the bearings are rolling, just so the bearings stay fairly decent and fairly nice um, on on that side of things. So um, the next process, and uh, you know, people may have a different way of doing it or what have you, but you're basically just gonna wanna go roughly like right here where when the sled's on here, you're gonna have enough room in between, like I showed you earlier in the video, um, that you're gonna have enough play room to get a strap in there. So, you just do it on that side, and then I can assume kinda of on this side. So, you're gonna put those in, and then from that part, you're gonna go ahead and put your eyelets in. So these I found easiest or best to kind of screw in. And I'm sorry guys for the lighting. It finally got dark, so. Um, but you kind of screw that in. And then I just use one of my little bits right here to kind of tee it off. And then it just makes it easier to twist because they do get tight. And the drill bit with these, you're gonna want to undersize the size of the screw. So whatever the screw says, usually shoot one or two below that. And then that way it's gonna be a nice and uh, tight fit when you screw these in because they're, you're gonna be pulling a lot of tension on these for you to connect up to the sled. So I like to, these are uh, three inch eye hooks. So obviously I don't wanna go all the way through because it's only two by four. So I usually leave like an inch knowing that if I go all the way through, um, it's not gonna be a successful thing. So I'm gonna get this one in and then I'll put the other tire on and I'll show you guys what your end product will look like. All right guys, so project is complete. Um, so I got my flashlight here cause it's a little dark on the edge of my garage. But as you can see, you're basically putting those brackets in, right? And then that's gonna be the actual side that your sled sits on. So I'm gonna go ahead and lift my sled and basically slide it up underneath All right so on this side it is the beveled side of it so as you can see beveled side so you're going to want to make sure that it's back behind that bevel once it's back behind that bevel you can take a ratchet strap just like i did that one go right over the top 